Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial. Before we get started, I want to let you know that you can find all the code examples and resources we'll be using today in the GitHub repository linked in the video description below. This repository serves as a valuable companion to the tutorial, allowing you to follow along, experiment, and explore the code on your own time. I'm Samuel Giampieri, and I'm a freelance developer. Join my community by subscribing to my channel at Divergolabs. Explore a wealth of coding content and free courses on my website divergolabs.com. Hello guys, welcome to this new chapter. We will discover the use router in Next.js. As we explained in the previous chapter, we already dive inside the link component. We will see that the use router actually will have the same methods and we use the use router for the same purpose of the link. Actually, the use router is a hook that allows you to programmatically change route inside a client component. You cannot use the use router in our, the, a server component like link. Okay, so this is the, the main difference between links and use router. And uh, if you go to the official website, it's recommended to use link than use router which is simplifies the process actually. However, sometimes you have a requirement or need more control over the navigation process. You want to use a router hook for some other reason. So in this tutorial, we will explore how to harness the power of a use router and understand when it's ideal choice for navigating tasks. So let's discover the use router by coding. Okay, first of all, we are going, we are inside our Next.js tutorial where of course, you can find in GitHub and uh, you can see the, the link above and download all the code. I want to create a new route that we use for testing the use route. So we create a new folder. It's going to be a new route. We will call the use router route. Actually, it's not one of the best name, but it's okay for our... Okay, let's create a page inside. Page sex and here we go here i want first to clear my terminal let's create our page to use the use route before creating the page i want to create a client component because as i uh, as i said before the use route router can be used all inside client components so we create a component that we call user comp use router com.tsx so we specify that it is a use client component first of all we have to uh, import the use router from the next.js library uh, we will import from next navigation next navigation we create the component and we export it function is we call it the router com okay i want to discover one by one all the method that that use router offers to us so the first one let's create a button can okay, create a button is a type of button we want to add an on click event when i click this button i want to activate the use router let's see how the use router work so in this way from the route but before we have to import this component inside the page that we create before so we import from the page import we call it router com user use we call it the user router com and here we go, we import the component and now we create the page. Export actually is default function used and we will return this component. We use this one. Here we go. Const router is use router. This one we don't need. Here we go. So we have uh, actually the the use router. So we go into the terminal. We 
Are you undeved? We go. This is. Actually, we can refresh this. I want to go to the use router route to check the use router behavior. So, new route A. This is new route A that we specify here. So, if I click to this one, I will activate the push and go to the new route A. Let's see. And this is new route A. We can see the path is here, so it works. Let's see other methods from router. So we can, for example, of course, we can add all the button that we want. We want to create also a new route B. We can also create an array of component with the map as the same way of link. We can also use router also offer a replace method that actually is the same as the same behavior of the link replace. So we call it router replace. We can call new route C. Another me method is uh, refresh router. Refresh. Here we go. And the use router also offer uh, the back and forward navigation between the browser history. We can also check this. We can check the forward. We will see later if it works can be forward click and also at the same way we can specify the back and here we go it's the back okay let's try let's go to our main use router mm, let's set let's put each one under the under each button so we can see better here we go. So we will see all the buttons. So as we see before, new route A, new route B, we are creating a browsing history in this way. And the route E, we get inside this one. So we have A, B, C. If I get A, B, it's normal. And the C is a replace. So it means that I will replace this, this page with C in the browser history. So I press C, I don't go back to my user router route, but I will go back to the other one that is user router route. We can also refresh to reload this page and re-render again. We can go forward, we can go back. For example, I get into the route A, use router route. This is, I go to route A, I go to route B, and also we can use a forward, back, back again forward and here we go it works so let's see now how the prefetching work in in the user router actually we have to we have to declare we have to use the prefetch inside the use effect that it means when i load the page after the page is rendered it will prefetch the page the other page that i want so first of all we have to use uh, the use effect we have to import react as, and also the use f from react we go we can declare the use effect here use effect here and the router will be activated with a prefetch this one we want to preload the pre-render the wait route that include the async await for five seconds so if i prefetch of course, I don't need to wait five seconds when I click on the page. We also want to activate the use effect just once. Here we go. We have reached the end of this video tutorial and I genuinely hope you have enjoyed its content. If it has been helpful to you, please show your support by liking the video and sharing it with your friends on social media. If you haven't already, I warmly invite you to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on upcoming lessons. Don't forget to check out my website, thevergolabs.com, where you will find a plethora of interesting programming content. You can also send me collaboration requests and explore all the programming services we offer. Your participation and support are crucial in my growing and to grow this community and providing you with even more valuable resources. Thank you for the bottom of my heart 
for being here with us and I look forward to seeing you in the next video tutorial. 